Thanks for having me. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I am Natalia. I am an online business manager and I'm based um, just outside Bristol in the very wet and rainy southwest of England. I do hope that you cannot hear the rain through my microphone. It's absolutely tipping it down here today. Um, and this morning I'm going to be talking to you about leading with digital communication. So this presentation and workshop is all about digital leaders. So how you can lead your team from the top in an inspirational way to encourage effective communication, particularly when managing um, virtual teams and working digitally. So I'm gonna start by looking at what is digital leadership. As a digital leader in 2022, we all use um, digital assets, whether we are confident with technology or not. So digital leadership is the strategic use of digital assets to help achieve a company's business goals. And a digital leader places high importance on communication and obviously shows a clear understanding of how technology contributes to their team's focus and goals. And that's kind of who I'm pitching this at today. So I'm really hoping that if you're joining me live for this workshop or if you are watching, afterwards on catch up you are going to be the sort of person who is in possibly a senior a managerial perhaps um, a ceo position leading a team of people and obviously post pandemic so many of us um, are either still working remotely perhaps hybrid working or flexibly and how um, how we can manage communication across our teams um, in with strong leadership skills I think is more important than ever um, in today's day in business. And it's something that I support my clients with um, from the top down, really. I'm going to be talking to you about how leading digitally with communication really sets the tone for your team, whether you are a team of two or three or uh, 30, 300, whatever it is, the way that you communicate both verbally and through tech really sets the tone and starts to build trust throughout your team and ultimately as a digital leader that is what we are aiming to do to allow you to meet your business goals in the most streamlined and effective way so we're going to be talking about how modeling excellent communication skills in the digital world can really build a positive team structure and i'm going to be sharing with you some theories around this, as well as some of the tech tools that you can use um, to implement excellent digital communication across your team. I just put in pink at the bottom there on my screen. It's important that a digital leader does not need to or should not be expected to know every technological advancement, but they do require the growth mindset to approach new ideas, to model opportunity, and to inspire multi-generational teams. I think it's really important as a leader, as a manager, senior manager, whatever level uh, entrepreneur you are at, to feel confident almost in the unknown. So many of us are au fait with the tech systems that we use day in, day out, week on week, and we can almost use them in our sleep but it can feel slightly unnerving when a new system comes along. You might have heard about it on the grapevine. You might have read about it in the press or on some blogs or reviews or social media. And you can start to think, oh gosh, should I be using that? What if it doesn't do this? How would I know that? Use your team to support you in um, development, developing technological awareness. Don't feel that you have to have all of the answers. I think that's really important. So I'm just going to start with some research here. So the MIT Sloan Management Review in collaboration with Deloitte uh, report, which some of you may have heard of, it's called Coming of Age Digitally. If you haven't, I've linked it here and I know that the slides will come around to you at the end. It's worth a quick Google, to be honest. It's got some excellent support in there for digital leaders. And they had these key points, which I wanted to start with here. Digitally maturing companies push decision making further down into the organization. And I think that's a really important thing to think of when we are modeling communication, making decisions, open transparency in our comms, maturing companies push that decision making further down. So rather than leading with a kind of top level approach, having collaboration and discussion across your team is proven to be really successful. Digital business is faster, more flexible and distributed and has a 
different culture. I'm just going to make myself smaller. So, I can, um, culture and mindset than traditional business. Having a growth mindset when you lead, particularly in comms and digital tech, is so so important. Being open is vital. Digitally maturing organisations are more likely to experiment and iterate. As they were saying um, at the beginning, not being afraid of getting something wrong, not being afraid of not knowing all of the technology around you. And individuals report needing to continually develop their skills, but say they get little to no support to from their organisation to actually do so. That's something I'm going to um, come on as well. So giving your team time if you are creating um, a new system um, to giving them actually time to try it out to get confident and au fait with it, to allow them to make mistakes while it's in that kind of practice training time. You might be listening to this thinking, okay, Natalia, how does all this stuff about leading digitally link to communication? That's what I've come here to hear you talk about today. And here we go. So keeping in mind that when we are face to face with somebody, if I was delivering this to you today face to face, communicating your message is conveyed as follows. 55% is body language, 38% is tone of voice, and only 7% is words. And with many businesses now operating online virtually, leading from the top with communication strategies that inspire trust, promote responsibility, collaboration and honesty are more important than ever. When you are across the screen, uh, the Zoom, the Teams, whatever it is, um, from your team, from the person you're communicating with, you're trying to move your business forward. You've lost 55% of that communication because you can't necessarily have your body language because you're not sat across the desk to them. So therefore, using digital communication tools, having a clear strategy and being consistent in the way that you promote communication across your team is more important than ever. And I think those of us operating in this space, in this new space, I suppose, because although obviously tech, you know, we've been, I've been working remotely way before the pandemic, but not everybody has. And now tech is keeping up with us. It's allowing us to kind of be those forebearers and modeling communication across multi-generational teams. So how to model digital communication as a leader? The kind of key point really is to model the behavior that you wish to see in your team, just as you would with a child or anything really. Modeling the communication that you want to receive back is so important. So don't be sending an email to your whole team at 6 a.m. if you don't want to be receiving an email from your team at 6 a.m. Try not to CC everybody into something or reply all to something that has only needed one person's attention. Um, think about how professionally or conversationally you choose to use an instant messaging tool and whether that is appropriate for your business. If you are trying to um, increase informality and, and boost relationships, using a tool such as say Slack or instant messaging could be really, really helpful. So think about behaviors that you wish to see and use those yourself. I think that's really key. Be open and inquisitive to new techniques and new technology. Don't ever just choose a system and then that's it, full stop, end of, we are done forever. Be open, allow discussion and be inquisitive. I just said, encourage discussion across your team from the top to the bottom. As we are um, now using technology across multi-generational teams, it's really important that your discussion and your active listening, which I'll probably come on to in a minute, is open. We cannot assume that everybody in our team has the same technological skills, know-how and confidence as we do. By encouraging discussion and listening to people's responses, particularly across multi-generational teams where confidence and experience in tech systems will be different, it can really boost such trust and positive communication. 
Be very clear and transparent in the steps that your organisation is taking, particularly with any change. Don't leave people in your team with unanswered questions about what they can do to help. So say, for example, if you are introducing using Microsoft Teams across your organisation and not everybody has used Microsoft before, um, you haven't used Teams, perhaps people don't know how to share their screen. Maybe there's communication with the chat functionality or the presentation um, options in it. Make sure you allow opportunities for people to kind of play and get confident with the tech before they are expected to use it in a, in a formal work setting. To allow people to ask questions about things in a safe way, because if you're in a Monday nine o'clock meeting, people are using new technology for the first time, they may not feel that they have the opportunity in your agenda to raise their hand and ask a question about how this is going to help you boost such and such or where this is moving you to. So allow that time as a leader to model the opportunity for people to answer their and ask questions. Regularly gather and act upon feedback from your team or your colleagues. I wouldn't ever encourage a business owner to implement a new system and then send out one of those um, those forms. You know, that we've all we've all had them. I'm sure a quick survey, a digital survey, a couple of questions. Mark me out of ten. Was it any help? You know, the kind of thing at the end of a workshop. I hand you a piece of paper with a couple of questions. You score me, and I take that as my feedback. Let's be honest. How often is that feedback acted upon in a proactive way? Now, if you are a digital leader in 2022, boosting communication across your team, the feedback that you receive should be in different formats, verbal, written, however it, it would be appropriate for the tech and your team, and it should be acted upon, it should be recorded and it should be reviewed. And then feedback to your team, showing and sharing how things have been edited. Keep people in the loop. There's different ways of doing this. Again, of course, it depends on the team, on the location, on the size. Um, but it kind of carries on from the feedback, really. People like to feel informed. Your team will want to feel that their actions, their daily work is helping to boost your business and move you forward closer to your goals. By keeping people in the loop, and it does not have to be a meeting, it could be a monthly newsletter, um, it could be something that you employ a freelancer to create a roundup, um, it could be a voice note, it could be something on your Slack channel every Monday morning or every Friday afternoon, keeping people in the loop about how everything is going really models excellent digital communication. And when you are talking about feedback, make sure that you gather emotional feedback. Leave your door open to discover how your, feel, your team feel about any changes. As people, we all react to change very differently. Um, and it's important as a leader that you allow time to listen to how people feel about that change and consider if there's any extra support that they might need um, to facilitate it in a way that works for them and of course for the business. And I've mentioned already, please make sure that you provide time for your team to learn new skills. People learn in different ways um, and people will learn different speeds depending on their age, their confidence, um, their experience, all of these things. One training day, is often not enough time for somebody to learn a whole new system. People need to have opportunities to implement it and trial it out. I would suggest that that should be calendarized as part of your strategy. Just gonna move my little face there. So how to embed this positive communication across your team? Start with yourself. I said to model it, be that example of championing positive communication. Be a responsive and thoughtful listener. Provide your full attention. Don't allow yourself to create pre to preempt responses to the speaker. We all do that as humans, even in our relationships. It's so easy to start creating an answer in your head to what you think their problem is or their concern. Actually sitting and not speaking and listening is a really key skill. Take into account um, personal preferences. Clearly, some decisions will need to be taken 
but it is important to look at the team in front of you and think what is going to work best for people that you work with. And I'm gonna come on to the tech in a minute, but it's important that you use digital labeling tools and workflows available to you to think, right, who needs to be informed about this now? Are these notifications going to interrupt my team's productivity? Should I CC in the whole team? How can I model managing notifications and digital interruptions that are not going to stop people's productivity, but are going to ensure that I've communicated this in an effective way? And moderate the balance between synchronous and asynchronous communications. So that is scheduled communications, such as meetings, phone calls that are diarized, and non-asynchronous, such as instant messaging. Try and get a balance between the two. I am not here to say that you should always do away with meetings or you should only use <laughs> such as message or chat, but I think having a balance creates kind of different spaces for formality, and that can be really helpful. Um, because you might have your big timeline where everybody's allocated their actions, but a super quick little question doesn't necessarily need to be notified for the whole team. That could just go to say this person over here. And modeling the balance between that is makes you a really good digital leader. Said consider a monthly roundup newsletter. And lastly, don't over communicate. Ask yourself, have I said this in a clear way? Have I checked that people have understood? And is it working? Are actions coming from this? Then, that, then you know that you've done what you should be doing. Now I'm gonna move on to look at some tech tools that can help you to um, create this kind of level of communication digitally. Obviously we're on it today. Zoom is the market leader for video calls. It's got a variety of options for large and group webinars. It's great for screen sharing and it has recording options. Of course, it has its chat facility. It's really good for large teams, particularly those um, um, kind of like worldwide in, in many locations. And it syncs with most digital other programs. Similarly, Microsoft Teams. It's great if you use Office Suite, um, particularly Outlook for your emails. It also has the chat and messaging for uh, feature, as well as being able to use the voice calls. Those are the kind of two main options, which I'm sure most of you will be aware of. Google Hangouts, I think, and, um, is, and is brilliant if you're a G Suite user and you have a Gmail inbox. It's most used for casual conversations and instant messaging. So if your team uses a Google Workspace, Google Hangouts can be great for those quick uh, comms that don't need to be recorded or saved. Similarly, but outside of Google is Slack. Slack is an instant messaging service. That's the market leader for instant comms. You're able to use it with loads of integrations. Google Drive, you can share files. It's excellent for teams of all sizes because you can have small breakout channels um, and it uses one line at a time messaging. So it's not ideal um, for larger communication. Just check it. Basecamp um, is a digital tool that's loved in the coaching industry, but it's also really good for task management. It does have chat and messaging facilities um, and file sharing, milestone tracking. Join.me is a really simple conference and video calling software with screen sharing capability, and you can customize the URLs, perhaps good for a smaller team or people who may be looking to make a smaller investment. And Notion, which some of you may be familiar with, is a customizable notework, notebook for sharing documents, projects, and work across your team. Also a brilliant project management tool. It's popular in the creative industries. For project management linked with communication, I think these are some of the best tools that I would encourage my clients to implement. Um, my favorite being Trello, um, which is great for collaborative project management. It's like a digital pin board for projects. You have different boards and you can share, you can use checklists, you can set deadlines and more. You can um, set notifications and the timings that you receive notifications by email. So you could get a notification once a day of all of all, everything that's happened in Trello for you. You could get them instantly. You could turn them off so you only see what's going on when you check in. That kind of notification management is a really nice way to manage communication. Asana is another great one, excellent for teams working on group projects, 
I'm, I'm kind of rushing these a little bit because I want to get on to showing you what they look like. Asana is nice because you can view it in different ways. So you can view it in a traditional pinboard way, such as Trello, but it also has like a Gantt chart uh, functionality. Both of these have multiple integrations, such as Gmail. So say if you receive an email from somebody in your team into your Gmail and you want to create a task in, in Asana, you can, if you've integrated Asana with your Gmail, you can just pop it up on the right hand side of your screen there and it will sync straight away. So rather than then having to go and make a separate note, it's already pops it in there for you. These are just really quick kind of time saving ways that you can help your team follow up on things as well. Gantt charts are often accessible on paid versions of things like Asana. They break a project into manageable steps. Really good if you've got a team working on one project and people are responsible for different parts. They can then be notified of the progress along that. Um, so say, for example, uh, Dave's got to finish something so that Jenny can then do her part. Jenny will get a notification when Dave's chunk is finished and then she'll know when she can begin. Things like that can really cut out that whole, hi, Dave, have you finished? Not yet, Jenny, I'll let you know when I have, all of that kind of thing. ClickUp, which is really popular at the moment, um, it's kind of the 2022 um, replacement, not replacement, but modern version of Trello and Asana, I guess, it's really popular. It has everything in one place, which is a brilliant feature. It, you can have tasks, documents, chats, goals, and more. It's easily customizable. You don't need any code. So if you've got a coding, so if you've got a team who particularly are not massively tech um, confident, it can be a really nice option. It's also got multiple views. And then Miro, which is free online visual whiteboard tool, which is brilliant for sharing collaboration. So imagine if you were all in the office together and now you're not, but you, you want that option to kind of draw all over the whiteboard to, um, to delegate certain parts of a project to different members of your team. It's a really good um, live piece of technology. Again, I'm going to show them to you now. So if I just move myself down here. This is an example of a Trello board. So as a user, you can have more than one board and you can invite multiple people to specific boards. You can color code labels, which can help things visually, and you can add different members to each card, these are called, and these can be moved to when things are done. This is Asana, which to be honest, on a high level works in a very similar way. You can add a priority to certain things. Again, people can be notified. You can see there are three people on this um, team here. These, when you click into each one, it can have kind of subcategories coming off it and tasks, which can be ticked. And then when the whole thing is done and so on, then you get a big tick here. So it's a really nice, a nice visual tick list, I suppose, for certain tasks across a team. This is also in Asana. This is on the paid version of Asana. This would be um, a Gantt chart. So if I just move myself over here, these are um, all of the ideas and things for people to complete here. And these show you the dependencies of each thing against a calendar. So say this was January. Once this is completed on Monday the 14th, then this can begin. When the blog design is completed, then this person knows that this can begin. So if you have that kind of process in your team, it's a brilliant way um, to manage and communicate out of your inbox, which I think uh, ultimately a lot of us uh, are encouraged to do and we like doing. This is ClickUp. You can see at the top here, it's got a board view, it has a box view. It has lots of different views and you can customize. So each of your team members, you know, how they work visually, they could customize how they would like things to see. So we've got some to do's here. Again, we've got priorities. Um, we've got things pending, in progress, and then in review. Really nice if you're a leader who is waiting on your team to complete things, you can get notified when things are ready to review. So perhaps some copy to go out, need your eyes on it before it can be sent um, to print. Really nice way, rather than checking in, checking in, your team can let you know when things are ready to review. A really nice modern project management tool that again integrates with loads of the major tech that we use in our businesses. Notion, as I mentioned, this is really popular in the creative industries at the moment. Um, very similar, ultimately, just um, it's very, I say black and white, it's almost like a big white page. 
it's far more customizable, I would say. You might, if your team is particularly tech savvy, are you probably going to prefer something like Notion over something like ClickUp? And this is Miro. Um, so this is the kind of visual whiteboard. This would be the your homepage when you logged in. This is a free tool. You can see that you can have live sessions with your team. Um, you can create it super simply as well. It's literally drag and drop these little bits and type in. And with your mouse or um, your pad, you can zoom in and out of each of these whiteboards. Each of these are editable in live time. So say if Trevor here was typing on the yellow square here and I was on a call with him or I was on the Miro board, I could see what he was editing. Really nice way to manage team projects. And this is um, an example of a bigger one. So here you've got a mind map. We need a little chat here. All these sorts of things you would just create from here, like drag and drop. Absolutely brilliant. If you have a team, any team, I suppose, I was just about to say, say it's somebody who's not brilliant at coding or they kind of, they get the, uh, slightly wary of new technology. This is really simple. It's literally like the whiteboard with a pen, but the pen is your mouse. That simple, really nice. And these can be saved and downloaded and shared. You can manage your notifications. And this tech is completely free. I hope that was helpful. Any questions, please do pop them in the chat. And I've got time for questions at the end as well. So final thoughts on this, building healthy communications across your team. The most important thing is to know your team. And if your team changes a lot, make sure that you keep up with that know your team, what suits them best, what are their strengths and weaknesses when it comes to using digital tech for communication. Perhaps your team really needs trust building within it. Model that from the top by looking at your own work habits. Think to yourself, when is the best time in your own schedule to block off for communication? Um, I talk a lot in my work about time blocking. Do you, are you somebody who gets to your, your desk, um, opens your computer and starts in your inbox? Or are you somebody who likes to crack on with your client work or your projects and wait to do your communication till the end of the day? Be really honest with yourself because there's no right or wrong way of doing it. But think how you work and then think about the impact that that is going to have on the team. When do people need to hear back from you? When do people need things reviewing? How is that going to fit into your schedule? I always say, if it's not calendarized, it isn't gonna happen. Make sure in your calendar, in your diary, however you work, you have blocked off time for communicating with your team because that time is precious and it is really important, but it's often the thing that I see in clients that they will leave out. So make sure that's calendarized and set those boundaries and stick to them. With modern tech at the moment, there is no, there's never a reason to send an email at Friday, um, seven o'clock on a Friday night or you know, seven o'clock on a Sunday evening if, if you're a weekday worker. Schedule your emails so that they will arrive when your team are at their desks, at their computers, when they're working. It's absolutely fine for you to work whenever you want to work, it's flexible working, but just be considerate um, and model the boundaries. So if you take Friday afternoons off and one Friday afternoon you choose to work, use your scheduling tool to be able to make sure that those things land on a Monday morning so that you are sticking to your boundaries because modeling those really builds healthy teams. Make sure you have opportunities for small, full and one-to-one -one exchanges. Communication doesn't just have to be across the whole team. Allow people time to be heard, to maybe have little breakouts or, or paired conversations. And then of course, one-to-one -one time as appropriate. Some of that I appreciate is gonna be perhaps performance management based or quite formal, but make sure you've got that blend between the formal and the informal. Set clear expectations around your team's requirements to contribute. Some of us are introverts, some of us are extroverts. In a big team conversation, it can feel quite daunting to contribute. Some people like to talk a lot more than others. Allow people expectations and allow people ways to communicate in, ways, in, in their way, in a comfortable way to them. 
So I'm just going to move this over here. Thank you so much for listening to me this morning. I'm going to ask for questions in a sec. Um, I, as I said at the start, I am an OBM. I'm an online business manager. So I have some clients um, that I work with regularly on a retainer and some that I work with on a one-off basis. I do offer a 90-minute consultation service where we spend an hour and a half together online like this, I suppose, and we will streamline your business. So we might look at time blocking for productivity. Uh, just this week, I worked with um, a business owner whose diary felt overwhelming and they didn't feel that they had that time based in for communication, for checking, or for um, like business development. They wanted the time to move things forward, but they just couldn't fit it in. So we would go through and look at your diary, try and boost your focus and product, productive time so that you can work smarter not harder.